Hello, everybody, and welcome to Arts and Crafts, where I'm Leo David from thunderstormart.com. Um, I'm uh, developing my world for uh, Medicus, and I'm also uh, available on uh, patreon.com slash thunderstormart, uh, artstation.com slash thunderstormart, twitch.com slash thunderstormart, and even facebook.com slash thunderstormart. Also, twitter.com slash thunderstormart. Uh, and today I have two very special, very awesome, very badass friends uh, helping me out. We got our regular resident expert fashionista, Ella. Hello. And How you doing? we also have very unique guest appearance by a uh, technical uh, game and systems designer. His name is Kevin. He's badass. Say hi, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> hi, Kevin. Uh, hi. Say hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. So, uh, yeah, on our screen right now we have uh, one of uh, one of my main characters for Oedipus, uh, which is um, I think I mentioned it to you, Kevin, before. It's a uh, it's a world story that I'm making. For, uh, it's basically a post-apocalyptic heavy metal fantasy. Yeah, kind of IP situation. Yeah. Developing a lot of characters for it. Uh, having fun, you know, just designing stuff. And uh, yeah, so this is one of my four ma main characters that I set up on. Her name is Zyra. And uh, she is a. She is a special kind of human that has basically superpowers. She's unique in that sense. Uh, she has a certain affinity with uh, the north and the winter and the wolves and the cold and stuff like that. And she's just exceptionally strong. Uh, and all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if you guys uh, can see this on the screen or on Twitch or on YouTube. I don't know if you guys are in there. But, uh, I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Zyra, yeah. you say? Yeah, so uh, Ella, as our resident fashionista, what do you think about this overall design? Actually, I really like it. I've always really liked your uh, touch on clothing because, um, well, if I could, I would probably dress as a barbarian, but with cloaks and, you know, all sorts of awesome hoodies. Right. Yeah, it, is, <laughs> it, is a little, it is a little warm for that, so... Yeah, I really like the crossing on the legs, and uh, I also like that little extra t half tunic thing that she has going on there. Half tunic? Uh, you know, like the small uh, uh, fabric that goes like on the side. Oh, that yeah, I want it to be like a... Fur. It would be hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I want it to be like a fur situation. So, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna look up some references I have. Uh, this is this was a concept that I drew before I uh, started a certain painting, and this is gonna be my first like kind of feel piece, and featuring this character. And it's uh, let me see if I can conjure it up here. Yeah, there it is. So, and Kevin, can you see this? Can you see my screen? Yeah. All right. So I have a. Like a little bit of a like a little scene of her kind of facing off, and imagine this whole area is gonna be filled with like mutants, kind of charging at her. Um, I'm guessing there might be a little bit of a delay uh, in the Twitch, so uh, it might be a second before you guys see it. But um, yeah, it's gonna be a big uh, feel piece for me and for the for the world, sort of. Um, but basically, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. And I, I have done a slight redesign for her primary melee weapon. Let's see if I can't bring that up. Around here somewhere. It's not here. Let me... Okay, let me load it up. Where are thou? Where art these? YouTube video. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me pop a page on. All right. 
So this is uh, this was uh, me beginning to do a, a kind of redesign on that X, uh, turning it into like an X side combo with uh, a little bit of a Nordic room situation happening on it. Uh, a little bit of decorations. Uh, the holes that you see in it will be will be housing. Um, uh, so this is like a little ring over here, like a little uh, copper ring, probably, I'm thinking. And um, the, it would actually happen in three different instances along along it. And um, I want her to be able to use that for kind of uh, almost like hinges and contact points because I, I was looking at a lot of uh, how people use... Uh, Real world flight techniques that actually did exist, but was not very uh, common or popular. But definitely, I'm noticing that um, people are used to the idea of uh, big weapons being swung around like baseball bats. And uh, I was talking to another uh, friend of mine who is a uh, pretty much an expert on uh, medieval warfare specifically and a lot of historical uh, stuff in general. And um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, like in a lot of in a lot of shows and a lot of games. Like you know, you see these guys like swinging these things, like free free swinging it, and uh, it, it it really uh, spends a lot of energy. And there there are more efficient way of doing it, like using it as an axis. So that's why I'm ha I'm adding those like points to be used as hinges, and uh, I think that will create some interesting uh, interesting visual change. So. Uh, Go ahead and uh... watching the two dudes fight with the uh, battle scythe, or I'm not sure what was its uh, uh, correct title, but the one that had the little handle was crazy sauce because it was basically happening. With, you know, uh, are, you, are you talking it? about the video that I sent you? Did you send me? Yeah, the professional scythe. Dudes. Yeah, yeah, I think they were like they were like <laughs> doing it at a rent fest or something. Yeah, crazy sauce. They did it so well. Yeah, it's legit. It was legit. All right, so I'm just going to sample a few colors. I definitely am leaning more towards uh, heavy uh, earth tones for her outfit. You see over here? You can see her, her own colors and all that stuff. So I want to try to get uh, that. Because uh, I like how it works in this uh, situation. So I'm probably going to go ahead and grab this just to sample it. Hey, Kevin, your thing is doing the weird stuff again. Wait, my thing is what? Your, there, there was a weird sound coming from you again, but it's gone now. Um. No, it's fine. Uh, okay, so I'll use this for a color sampler. So, yeah, and I, I wonder if I should add, like, all sorts of like, little decorations behind, beyond what she has right now. I don't know. Really don't know. No, I'm just gonna try to say that stuff. Hmm. So uh Ella, what have you been up to? Well, um to be honest, mainly just uh, boring work or the a lot of that happened this week. Boring and, what? Uh, boring work i mean of the boring kind boring i unfortunately did work. not get to mm -hmm. yeah i did not get to sew anything awesome even though i had plans to because uh a lot of real life uh, uh stuff came in the way and needed to be taken care of mm -hmm. but uh all is good and i'm working on a design for uh well it's gonna sound weird but a really cool geeky um not hoodie, that would not be the right uh, term, not cloak, cape, yeah, cape. Oh, nice. If I understand correctly, cape is the one that goes as far as about your thigh line or a bit above. Mm -hmm. Probably, sounds about right to me. Yeah, it doesn't go all the way to the to the bottom. And uh, I'm working on a really cool design. Well, I, I hope something. Yeah, I hope so, that sounds cool. What uh what is your uh what are your influences for set design? Well, um 
a lot, to be honest, because I started looking at the modern, uh, the old fashioned, sorry, clothes, the ones that uh, British people used to wear quite often up mm-hmm. until not that long ago. Yes. And uh, I looked at the design of it and the way that the shoulders are crafted and everything, and I decided to give it a bit of a modern take. So I also started just uh, Pinteresting the hell out of this thing. <laughs> And apparently a lot of people, you know, fashion designers made uh, all sorts of really cool capes that you wouldn't really see on someone, you know, day to day necessarily. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to make something that was like definitely something you could just wear as a coat, you know, instead of a coat. That would be a day to day thing and not just a, a Halloween thing or, you know, special occasion thing. So I basically realized that I have to introduce something a bit new to the fashion world because I felt that if I just went with the good old designer route of starting with the same old thing that everyone else is doing, it's not gonna it's not gonna work well for me. That's true. So, gotta, so gotta I'm, stand I'm, out from the crowd. I I felt really crazy when I thought about starting to make really cool capes and I uh, went through the biggest real tube like reality tube that I could think of, which mm-hmm. is my mom, and. I told her, like, you, okay, you're going to think it's crazy, but bear with me. And I told her about what I'm trying, and I showed her a bit of my design. She th- she thought, like, I would wear it. I think it's awesome. Make it young and awesome, you know, something that you would wear, and I think other people would wear it, too. So, and you think this is going to be for really costumes, nice. or, like, you're trying to make it nope. so that people wear it for, like, day-to-day life? Day-to-day life. I, as I may have mentioned uh, previous, like in the last, uh, in the first podcast we made, I have been binging the hell out of Shark Tank, and I've watched everything by now. And I've watched Beyond the Tank, which is what happens to those businesses after. Mm-hmm. And I realized that my business model that I was working on was really unsustainable. I can't just do Halloween stuff and just do costumes. It, it's, it's just a difficult way to live your life when you don't really know if you're going to make enough money each month right. so i decided to start a different way and uh, something that would have more of a mass appeal and that i'm not uh, restricted in a sense but i also want to do uh, com- like costume stuff still right. definitely but you don't want that to be your main may your may your business mainstay definitely not because i realized two very painful realities one is that most cosplayers the serious ones they make their own they don't really buy it the right. second one is this is such a competitive market, and if I want to make really, really high detail, awesome no. costumes, no doubt someone will want it and will be able to pay a lot for it, but not many, and it's too little, too small of a uh, market. And it's also a competitive market. It's not like I'm the only one doing it, so mm-hmm. Etsy is full of it. Um, so that's basically the realization I had, and I decided uh, to, to go with something else that I love, but just not costumes as a main role. Okay, that's it. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. That sounds awesome. I, I've been saying for years that I, I really want capes to come back in a big way. Me too, me too. Haven't we been talking about it for about a decade? And if we could, we would good, uh, put, like, uh, God damn it, I missed the word. Mm. Just throw on a nice cape and, you know, leave the house. Yeah. I wish that was uh, not weird. Hey Kevin, if you if it was legitimate and not weird to wear a cape, would you wear a cape outside? But a comfortable one, you know, one that makes sense on the inside, and not one that you would struggle to keep on or that would be uncomfortable. Cool. Kevin. Though I have to admit, men are not my main market. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. It would be super hard for me to market for men. Hey, Kevin, hello. you there? Yeah, hello. Yeah, okay, oh, I can no, hear you. Right. Yeah. Can you hear me? Or did I lose my headset? Um, so what do you think, Kevin? Would you wear a cape? Looks like... Maybe. So, uh, black. <laughs> a black cape, yeah. So what have you been up to, Kevin? I'm so sorry, my headset turned off on me. Oh. 
and I'm back. Okay, welcome back. So what have you been up to, Kevin? Uh, stuff. So I'm programming um, right now. Yeah. Tables. You're programming what? Tables. You're programming tables. Tables. Elaborate, please. Loot tables. Do they walk? Loot tables. <laughs> Loot tables. Just oh, basic oh. operates for items. Okay. All operates right. for items. Right. What? Uh, what progression would be interesting to keep a player engaged? Right. That sounds awesome. You're basically thinking what would keep people like me and Leo uh, uh, playing the game and uh, not throwing it, casting it aside for something else. It's a little slimy when you think about the design behind it because it's ecology that slot machines use. <laughs> of course, dude. South Park said it's best. As long as it's not freemium gaming, you're not making a deal with the Canadian devil. So you're in the clear. No, I, I don't think it's a deal with the devil because, I mean, if you don't want to play, you don't have to play. But if you want to play, it's your choice. No, no, you don't understand me. I meant as long as you're not making a game that's made out of micro charging, micro payments, micro then you're, you're in the clear. Yeah. Like a free game, but that in order to advance, you have to keep constantly paying it. Right. So as long as you're not doing that, you're the, you're good. So it's just a personal project. That's awesome, dude. So what what uh, what logic are you using for it? Like what uh, what are, what is your rule set? What's your decision making process? For the programming part of it, uh, I'll be using weighted probabilities. Okay. So basically, okay. you fill this table with items with um, weights. Okay. One hundred percent. They all have. You can add whatever weight. If you added something with a value of one, and a value and something with a value of two, then that thing is twice as likely to drop. Part of it. And when I think about this. So stuff, wait. So wait. There's a, there's a base drop chance. So so it keeps a relative chance. How does it work? Like what's your chance there's no relative chance okay it takes uh weights it's 100 percent okay oh okay. oh okay so so you say if something if something is a one it has a one percent chance to drop it if something is a two it has two percent chance to drop it. pretty much no 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 it's that it's weight um it is relative you're right i just thought about it, it is relative oh, okay that's okay so that's what i'm saying so you can put any number and it would just compare that number to what other numbers have, and that's so it, it keeps a relative chance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, that's like the only way it's done. I've collected a bunch of links on this on this subject, and that's how it's it. Interesting. Before I was doing this, like I started with a spreadsheet, and basically I just copied Diablo's numbers. And I charted it out and looked at what it looked like, the yes. shape of the graph. It's pretty what you would expect. All their stuff is on an exponential curve. XP is exponential. Their, um, as you increase difficulty, it's exponential. Sure. Monster damage, but it's not as steep. I have spent so much time grinding in Diablo. Uh, memories. I uh, guess. Some are pleasant and some aren't. <laughs> Do it. I'll always come back. But to yeah, Diablo. many hours. Sure. It's really strange with their graph. Like, it's not a perfectly smooth graph, okay. they'll have different spikes. So from level like 30 to 31, there's this really strange graph. What do you mean? 
it requires a different amount of XP than it did before. Just, just, think, just in those levels? Yeah, from level 30 to 31, and uh, two levels from level 40 and on until, until 70. Why do you it's think not, that is? I'm actually, I'm not sure. I think it like, it all depends. So when, when they, they probably, when they started doing this thing, it was a smooth graph, but then depending on, I don't know, play test. They were like, okay, we're running into some issues here because X, Y, Z, because of maybe the flow of the game or how you gain skills and whatnot. Something. Throw in a, a change. Hmm. Otherwise, I think what everyone does is they'll start with a formula, which just creates one graph and then in the play test and then make the tweaks as needed. Yeah, basically hard coding, quote unquote, hard coding in the numbers. Yeah. Well, so when you build your formula, you got to leave it a little bit open ended and be prepared to ha have allow for exceptions. Basically. Exactly. I was also looking at uh, Pokemon's progression curve because I mean, they're a pretty good example. Hey, man. It's like... <laughs> hey, man, that's legit. I got 100 levels and it all follows the same. This it, is really, really all, interesting. It all follows the same curve? Yeah, so the normal Pokemon, the most like commonly occurring Pokemon is X cubed. And okay. then for there's fast leveling Pokemon and slow leveling Pokemon. Yeah. For the slow leveling one, it's X cubed times like a smaller coefficient. Okay. And then for the fast one, it's you know, like a higher coefficient. And it just applies across the board, they don't they didn't need exceptions or anything. Yeah, there's no exceptions in Pokemon. Nice. Elegant. I like an elegant design like that. Yeah, the, the thing with Blizzard that they do a lot more uh, hand holding, you know, so they really keep a super tight experience. That's very tight. So tight, dude. I think what like to do is feel like you're strong. Yeah, that's what they're going after. Being stronger. You want to feel mm -hmm. like you're strong, but you can always get a little bit stronger. Even if you never played games before, it kind of just gets you started. And you're like, oh, I can handle this, you know? Right. I can handle this. And <laughs> they give it to you gently, you know? Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um... The first taste is free, and then they charge you. <laughs> And, and then, then you, you find yourself for, a you're already paid for the game at this point, but they want to keep you. Free. No, no, it was a figurative, yeah, yeah. payment. But I'm like, I found myself at 4 a.m. in front of a, a guide, you know, on YouTube. Like, I just want to pass this level. Just, just let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why they don't charge me? Makes money. gaming awesome. more effort into making money from WoW and Diablo. What's that? Into making money through WoW because making more money with Diablo, but like everything's free. You only need to buy it once. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't understand. Well, I mean, it's I like because it. they fucked up. Like originally they wanted to make it an evergreen by having the real, uh, real money action auction house and the design the game the original design of the game was completely wrapped around the idea that you would get completely random loot and like almost all of it would be complete shit right a bit like that yeah and then occasionally like certain numbers would roll high and roll good stats, and that would become a really valuable item. And then you can put it on the market for uh, to sell that item for real money, as opposed to in-game gold. Uh, like you could do a gold, because uh, there was a gold auction house and a real money auction house. And the idea was that for every transaction for the real money auction house, like there would be like Blizzard would take a little cut out of it. And that mm -hmm. was supposed to like make them really, really rich. 
and everybody fucking hated it because the game's experience was not contained. You pretty much they designed the games that you would legit not enjoy it. Like it would be not enjoyable unless you're spending money. That's terrible. It became pay to win. Yeah, it was legit pay to win, and people to this day have not forgiven them about that. But they went back and they're like, you know what? Fuck it. We fucked up. We're gonna we're gonna own up to it. There's that sound again. Doesn't sound like it sounds like crit like uh, night time sounds to me. Either that or Harry Potter trying to t- speak parcel tongue. <laughs> Um, so like yeah, that. so at that point they were like, okay, we're gonna cut our losses, and we need to uh, earn the the players' uh, faith again. So they just outright they're like, no more auction house, and now you are more you are like more reasonably likely to find good gear on your own because you can't trade. There's soul bound stuff you cannot trade anymore. So now they so they redesigned the game experience to be self contained. Uh, and the progression to be more linear so that there's always something next to do and you don't want to get stronger. They want to keep people playing, but they're not gaining anything from it whenever they're not. The only way they're making money off of it right now is DLCs, and they rarely make DLCs for it. They rarely make expansions for it. Wait a second. Did they make uh, World of Warcraft 3? I forgot to notice. No, I'm talking about Diablo. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, Diablo 3. Okay. Because okay. we we're talking about the problems, the, the real thing, the, the real problem that Diablo 3 had on, not on launch, but sort of after launch, but that was the plan. They, they designed the game that to have fun, you would have to spend real money to buy good items from other players. And well, want- can I give you my two cents on it? Sure. I think nowadays they're just completely focused on their, uh, you know, their competitor to League of Legends. And I'm making a new oh, Heroes of the Storm. It's a really the... good game. I actually I yeah. like it more than I like League of Legends. Legit. Uh, yeah, Ben likes it too. I I'm not into it because I just have a far too big of a community of friends in League. Like yeah. I only play League to Absolutely. play with my friends. And uh, of course, the League of Legends keeps getting better and better, and they keep improving. No, and not necessarily going... to be honest, but I really <laughs> enjoy playing with my friends. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, complaints to read, but that's not for now. Okay. Uh, anyway, I think they're focused, uh, completely focused on making money on that because they're making so much money off of skins. It's incredible. So they just kind of like, okay, Diablo is there. We don't really need to improve it all you that much. People are playing it. Yeah, yeah. Let's make money off of this shit. Yeah, so, yeah, so Diablo, yeah, so they, Diablo occasionally they make like big bucks whenever they come up with a new expansion, but they rarely make new expansions. So I think they will probably abandon the game. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you can monetize. What would you do, Kevin? How would you monetize a game like Diablo? You shouldn't do that now because they're no, in not the now, but of... I'm saying, let's say you're in charge of, 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 of Diablo 4. And they would just release the album floor. They shouldn't focus on D three at all. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying, what would you do different if you had a game like Diablo on your hands in terms of monetizing it? You build trust first, because people are still really salty about the auction house. Yeah, and that's what they they've done with three. That's why they spent all this money, and they get they 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 probably ended up with a loss with this game because they invested so much in it. Um. And they, I mean, they got a few expansions, and the, the expansions made money for them. But I suspect that the devel- cost of development was a lot higher than the. So I don't know. I don't know because it did it did good sales, like with the um, Reaper of Souls. I think that was like one of the best patches ever because of what he did to the game system and the team parallel system and killing the real real uh, real money auction house and doing a lot of other stuff of balancing things. To make the game feel like a better, more contained experience, uh, and adding Probably. rifts and everything, and then the Necromancer was nice. The Necromancer expansion. I mean, you know, you get what you pay for. Like <laughs> you bucks. pay for a Necromancer. He was a Necromancer. Or she, you know. I don't. I don't assume. <laughs> I, I, actually, I would never. Yeah, I actually play a female Necromancer. I usually play a female character. Hashtag family. Uh, barbarian doesn't look as cool as the male barbarian, though. Nothing looks as cool as the male barbarian. This game was optimized around the male barbarian. 
Like there are, that, that, that is the default character. Everything else is like, eh, it's there. Yeah, I played the Demon Hunters. Money from pets and banners and stuff that they're already providing for free. Right. And people would care about that more if they had like PvP. Yeah, yeah, and that's another thing that they kept promising PvP, and then they're like, yeah, they're just not going to do that. And, here, and that, was, that was a big mistake, I, I feel like. Off the bat. Off the bat, dude. Like, they were like, we're going to design this game and optimize it for gear. Specifically, optimize it to make people pay to get better gear. And they were like, well, it's one thing if you do that, you know. Now, I imagine this is what happened. Because then you have literally pay to win in PvP, which is the absolute worst. Like, it's bad enough when you do it in a PvE situation. But, man, if they introduce PvP in addition to the pay to win system, so... Way more. Yeah, and it's like, the thing is that from, from the very start, like... The classes are simply not balanced for a versus play. They're just not. Like you gotta, you gotta. I feel like you gotta design for PvP to begin with because it's it's pretty easy to to you know turn some knobs on the environment or on monsters to make it balanced, but you can't do it as easily to like the characters when it comes to being even against other characters. You know, and was, uh, it up Diablo two one v one, or was it like group PvP? I don't remember. Uh they were doing a little bit. They were doing a group PvP. They wanted like objectives and shit. P will be awesome. Then it would address the uh, the asymmetric uh, classes. Well, that's the thing. But they're, they're asymmetric, but they're not balanced. So like right now, you can you can PvP now. You know, like you have a brawling thing. Yeah, nobody cares about that. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, but but you can go and see how bad it is because. First of all, you have the power creep, which is just insane. Like right now, you you like I'm Paragon level like under four hundred, and you're Paragon level upwards of six hundred, and you have a full set, right? So there's literally nothing I could do. Like I would just immediately die if you and I were in PvP. Because it's play not, with me. what's that? Then we win PvP. Uh, yeah, so I guess another another approach to do it and the way I would solve it now, if if you're dealing with if you're dealing with um, and this is something that actually uh, Burnout did was it Burnout? Uh, Ella, you know what I'm talking about? That car game, the car fighting game. Car game? No, I am not strong with car games at all. No, you, it's like uh, you you build custom vehicles, you buy parts and you build custom stuff. And you just go and fight, and it's like a team team uh, PvP. And the thing is that they have tiers, because every piece of... Basically, every piece of armor, and that's what I would do if I wanted to do a Diablo PvP. Like, I would have tiers based on armor tiers, on, ge on gear tiers, basically. So, I, I would... I would, cr I, would write, I would have algorithms written that calculate how strong your armor is, how strong your gear is overall. In terms of your damage mm -hmm. and everything and your stats <clears throat> and then put like a range and be like okay people in this range like get matched up together so that way you know like you and me would never be mm -hmm. because it would be, a be a, it would be a matchmaking mm -hmm. system basically so there's that so, okay. that so that's a quick solution for that for the power creep. but the problem is that because the asymmetric classes like, at the end of the day, like, the range classes in Diablo have a huge advantage. Even though the melee classes have, like, a 30% damage reduction, it's not enough. Like, the yep. range classes just have too, way too many tools to kite. It's just way, I, like... I, I play the Demon Huntress, I remember. Yeah. yeah. You, you just, in PvP, like, you know, there's a reason why, you know, we don't use swords anymore. You know, we switch to guns. It just, you know, it's just better. It's just more effective, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that kind of shit would require, like, complete rebalancing. And, um... I have a lot of problems with Diablo. Yeah, so in that <laughs> sense, like, that would require a completely different take on everything. Like, 
he designed the levels to make to like account for that. Uh, where Small you know some, where certain areas favor different uh, types of, of roles, basically. In a ranged character, you need like a big space. But if like let's say the match the arena was like really small, then you have you got nowhere to go. Right, that's true. So then certain certain uh, environment. That's true. That's a very good solution, actually. That's a good way to to circumvent that because yeah, you know, certain areas get fucked. But as a as a melee, if it's like in the, in the open, and that's where the so these guys will creep over, but then occasionally you have like narrow corridors and shit, and you don't have a lot, a lot of where to go, and then you get face, you know, destroyed. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say that's a good solution for that problem. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, I would say I would say it's not So this chick is getting uh, redressed. What do you mean? Um, or is my uh, screen frozen? That's also possible. What do you mean? Redress? What do you? What are you currently working on? Um, I'm just painting stuff. I don't know how to. Zyra? No, yeah. I mean, is it the same character from before? Yeah. I just you don't see her line work because I'm uh, I'm working in different layers and I wanted to. Uh, so mm -hmm. Photoshop has one feature that this program that I'm using, which is uh, PaintStorm Pro, uh, does not have um, yet. But honestly, like they add new features all the time and respond to feature requests all the time. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. But in Photoshop, what I, what I do when I do something like this is I can... One second. Oh, I thought my headset got turned off again. <laughs> no, fine. Um, so in Photoshop, you can put multiple layers in one group and then set the blending mode for that group and it would pretend as if all layers underneath it, like it would almost like it would flatten them together and give them that effect. So. They, they would affect mm. the other stuff that, that's underneath them, but overall, the group, it would give them the same effect. And I wanted that to multiply. But I can't really do that here, so I got to do it separately, like so. And then I go back here, and then this happens. And that's mm. what I want. Now it's just conditions. It's like a necessary feature. I feel that way, yes. Well, ask them. Ask them to add it as a, as a feature. Uh, I will, and I actually, like, real talk, I've actually emailed them before or sent them a message on Facebook or whatever, just, like, feedback, and I was like, hey, it would be really cool if, there, if you know, it had this feature and that feature, this feature and that feature, whatever, and mm -hmm. they fucking added it. <laughs> like, oh, nice. yeah, they actually legit added several features. So, yeah, there's just a small studio in Russia or some shit, and it's like, what? yeah, they nice. listen to their community. So Smart people, yeah. smart businessmen. And the thing is that this program costs, uh, I don't know, around 20 bucks, and it's a one-time purchase, unlike Photoshop nowadays, which is like, I think, a monthly subscription. If you only want Photoshop, it's like 20 bucks, and you've got to commit to a year of paying 20 bucks a month, every month. This wow. thing, you pay 20 bucks once, and you're done. Wow, that that is very cheap for a one-off uh purchase that's really nice. yeah and i'm really really happy with this program so the great psd I'm, yeah and you know you know what's funny um so psd stands for photoshop document and psds here in paintstorm stand for paintstorm document but you can, <laughs> but you can jump back and forth um you can open the psds in both photoshop and in this i wonder if they did it on purpose Oh, 100%. To have like 100%. 100%. The... 100%. Hmm. There's no, there's no the way layers, all the modifiers. Layers. What? Yeah, it keeps most of your modifiers. Uh, certain things it keeps, but doesn't do very well and doesn't have a text engine like Photoshop does. So certain things can carry over uh, better than others. Uh, certain filters look a little bit differently, behave a bit differently, but. But 
overall, I would say it's pretty much like it works, and I I, I often do. So yeah, that helps because you know I have a perpetual license for Photoshop, which Adobe would be probably happy for me to get rid of, so that I get a good subscription model. But I'm like, nope. Paid for this. This is what I want. Thank you. I'll stick with my my older Photoshop that does what I needed to do. PS4. I'm sorry. CS4. Uh, CS6. Yeah. CS4. Like I have not updated since Guildhall. Oh, oh, you see, you saying you have CS4. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good enough. <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, like, well, you know, what, what do you need it for? What else do you need it for? You know what I'm saying? So, Leo, what have you been doing lately on medical? Um, mostly what we see on the streams, um, I, I have been, uh, thinking originally, I, um, I was thinking that I would make, like, I really want to have fun with this world and, but I was thinking to kind of make it unique. I'm gonna do what I want, but like exclude dragons and don't have dragons in this particular world. Mm -hmm. And couple of days ago, I'm like, eh, fuck it. I'm going to do dragons. Yeah, so here be that. dragons. So, yeah, I'm going to add, I'm gonna add dragons to this, uh, to this IP. I could add the dragons. What's that? Add dragons. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Mandatory dragon is mandatory. Apparently. Yes, well, you can make them special in all sorts of ways, you know, don't have to be the classic uh, dragon. Yeah, I was thinking about that, and actually I started sculpting in, uh, Easy Brush, I started sculpting, uh, Soul Dragon, because, uh, I have, uh, the, the, the IP that has a, um, has, uh, like, uh, six, uh, something akin to, like, chaos gods, basically, or demigods, or whatever. Something maybe their servants would be like dragons, and they would have unique properties and looks uh, based on their affiliation. And I was trying to like think what what would a mutant dragon look like, and then that that made me thinking, okay, well, what if? Um, and of course, all of this is subject to change; like none of this is final. So um, I was thinking, you know, what. What would a mutant dragon be? Something okay. So the base one, you know, would have would kind of be like you would just like to be like skin, you know, like wouldn't have scales. It would be like pink fleshy kind of deal. And, and then uh, <laughs> uh, not, not super nasty. Not super nasty <laughs> so kind, of, kind of like uh, I couldn't help but imagine a sphinx cat immediately. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> and um, that's horrible. Like though. just like uh, you know, skin and veins and shit and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> and above that, I'm thinking uh, probably do High some sort of, uh, Sorry. Uh, and above that, probably do some sort of a Hydra situation with many heads, you know, many heads, many tails kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like so, Hydra. So that's for them. And then I have uh, another, and I have another faction that's like that they they're, they're like they look like angels and they. Uh, they kind of control uh, undead forces, and I, I was thinking like it would be like undead dragons at first, and but then yeah, the, but then the 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 level above them would be like black feather dragons, like emo dragons and shit. The <laughs> um, real dragons are right, 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 right. Well, different types of dragons probably in different areas of the world, I assume. Uh, no, because they're not natural, so they would. They, they would mostly be tied to their sources. They just think they created them in a way. So they're supposed to be like uh, ex almost extinct type, or I would uh, say like very few bad, but very rare and very very rare encounters. So they're not everywhere. I want them to be 
super rare, but I do want them to heal because I do want to design them. And I want them to be like pretty much the the toughest, scariest, strongest thing that you can face that's not an actual demon guy, you know? So like you like you see one you run. Like you don't you don't beat them, you know? Like it, it's it's almost impossible to beat them. Like they're fucking ridiculous. You know, I don't want it to be like, oh, is it a D and D level ten encounter? You know, that that, <laughs> that five people. Is that a red dragon or a black dragon? Right. You know. I'll take a red yeah. dragon. Like I don't want you. I don't want five people at like mid level to be able to take on that. Like it would need to be like a fucking mythic raid type situation. <laughs> where, where you need forty people. Illustration. What? In your illustration was that a, was that the dragon you're talking about? No, that was uh, actually. Is that a worm? Yeah, actually, I should. Uh, I I didn't think about that, and it's so obvious. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm probably gonna tag that into that group with the dragon with this thing. Um, yeah. What are they call probably, it? Wyverns. Uh, it wouldn't be a wyvern. It would probably be like a worm because it doesn't really have wings. Um, so, yeah, I would probably count that as part of the level situation. I mean, it's just like a kind of like a giant lamb motherfucker that's just terrifying. I think it's supposed to be terrifying. Yeah. And I'm, I'm giving it like multiple eyes and shit, you know? Maybe that would be what I do for the mutants, give them multiple eyes. I don't know. It could be for some of the other ones. I'm trying to think. I, I know there's one faction that's like, you know, like killer robots and shit, and that's easy. Like, a, like I can grab, like, some of the other types of dragons and just have, like, a fucking assimilated, like, half-machine piece of shit that, like, takes over their brain, like, cyborg dragon type situation. And that's new. I haven't seen that before, so... Um, and I have uh, I have some watery horrors and shit. So I'll have to think about what to do with that. I'm probably gonna do some kind of dragons that are look like giant eels with tentacles and shit. Um, what else we got? We got and I don't know what to do with that. So there's one faction of demon can demon like things that are like. Um, they're like a, they're, they're almost like vampires, but they don't really, uh, they don't really suck blood. They just kind of drain your life force. Okay. And they can create vampires and shit. And the thing is that their main thing is that they create, they, they play with like mind like that. So they create a lot of illusions and shit. So, so I don't know what kind of oh. dragons to do for them. Sort of mind flayers. All right. I could I it. could uh, not do dragons and just do sphinxes for them. Does it have to be one or the either? Uh no, it does not. But the thing is, the what thing of them, they're things. like you know, like kind of the stereotypical almost vampires kind of things that they just they're immersed in society and all that shit, but they're nobody knows what they are, but they're basically vampires. Um. So I don't know what would be their god, uh, their god's uh, kind of take on that dragon-like creature. That's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of stumped for. Because I also have the the kind of the forest spirit thing, and I can do a lot of like green general greed stuff. Um, so the forest one is easy, you know, because I can just make beautiful like things. A lot of fantasy creatures, but yeah, it's the it's the energy vampires that I have a hard time with. I have an idea though; it's giving me an idea because if I'm thinking in terms of energy vampire, I can do like a really thin looking creature and whatnot. Hmm. Oh, now, now I saw the, that you're working on a different painting. 
No, like I'm not working on it. I just brought it up to kind of look at this okay. worm. I wasn't sure if I was lagging behind or not. Have you heard of uh of a <laughs> hello? I think you cut off again. Yeah, I think so too. So Ella, have you heard of a? Oh, have I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live you so. <laughs> you know, uh, okay. Welcome back. Called Riffs. PG. Just learned about this. Uh, you were cutting off really bad, dude. We, we, we lost most yeah, of the Yeah, very. Very. <clears throat> You need to get better internet, by the way. I have good internet. Not from where I'm standing. I'll cast. What? Cast. Should be good. Hello? Did you hear that, Ella? All I heard was pretty good. Hmm. I think he's vlogging or something because I don't hear anything. What's that? Is he still with us? Because I, I don't hear anything. Uh, uh -huh. Are you there, Kevin? Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, okay. Yeah, sometimes we can't hear you. Now. Well, maybe because I'm not talking. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes you're talking and you cut off and you don't come back. So. I don't know. I, I have, like, I have pretty good internet. I don't know what it is. Hmm. And Ella, you're hosting the phone call, right? So it's not me. No, yeah, now it's cool. Now, now I hear you fine. Yeah, I hear you fine now. Yeah. Okay. So, what were you saying? Have you ever heard of what before things went to shit? A paper RPG called uh, Riffs. Called what? IFTS. 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 Rifts. Rifts. Uh, a pen and paper RPG called the Rifts. I don't think so. Learn about this. You should take a look at it. It's like, it's post-apocalyptic. Reminds me of um, some cool concepts. Uh, that sounds pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I'd like to check that out. Yeah, super mutants called juicers that inject themselves with steroids. Oh yeah. Yeah, that they have people from other dimensions. Hmm. From another dimension through portals, and like they're called rainbow knights because when they come through, they walk in on a rainbow. Oh, nice! It's like, uh, are they like Asgardians? Aliens, I know, but are they like Asgardians? Maybe. Have you ever watched uh, Stargate SG1? Yeah, I've what was that? Me, uh, aliens that introduced themselves. Early in human history. Hmm. This, but I like. I read about it, and it sounds really cool. Yeah. Have you played it? Nope. Where do you, where can you get the rules for it? Find a PDF somewhere. Yeah, check it out on the dog, man. Tell me what you guys thought about it.
So uh, you guys were hanging out with Nadav uh, for your uh, for his birthday, right? I didn't know it was his birthday. Oh, you were just hanging out. Yeah, I thought it was like uh, get together for for Chris. Right. And he's like, "Oh, it's my birthday too." I was like, "Oh, it's your birthday." Nice. All right. 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 This is looking pretty good. Thank you. I really like the color. The color? Co color. No, the neck color. Yeah, the yeah the neck color. Yeah, you're saying it correctly. It's fine. Sorry? You're saying it correctly. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, good. I will, you know, accent. <laughs> you do have an accent. I sure do. Find it highly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's targeted to be. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Uh, okay, what else do I want to do? Mm, yep. I'm gonna... Dampen. Yeah, dampen some of the darks in some of these areas. They wouldn't be as uh, they shouldn't have as dark of an outline as some other areas. After this, I'm probably gonna do a pass of. Uh, Start actually coloring it properly. Actually blending and shit. I don't want to get to the uh, the point with that. Uh, yeah. So this chick, she has uh, her primary weapon, the melee weapon is that axe sight that, that uh, I showed you all earlier. But also I need to design a, um, also I need to design, she basically has a gun as well. Um, and it's like a, it's like a, like a spray and pray kind of like a little SMG, almost like an Uzi. But I want to set it up so that it. Um, well, she has uh, like runes on it, just like she has runes on the on her gun, on her um, on her axe sight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what the runes do is basically every time a bullet goes through the chamber, that it puts a uh, it puts like a cryo kind of effect on it so basically she has a gun that fires freezing rounds basically so everywhere it goes it just kind of explodes into a cryo explosion and freezes whatever whatever it hits you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. sounds awesome uh yeah i'm gonna try I'm trying to avoid having pure black on here. It's just not uh, the best for. Yeah, I would make it dark gray or dark brown or something. Yeah. More natural. I just want to bring down looking. the. Yeah, I just want to bring down the. Some of it, some of the line work. So that later I can have like more precise control with uh, 
shadows and what have you. If I bring it down a little bit. I have more precise control of it. So I'm going to do this. Oh, okay. Oh. Control control directly. Okay. So now I'm thinking maybe the darks are a little bit too dark. Uh, image, let's see, can I replace color here? Background, scene separation. I don't think I can replace color. I'm trying to get uh, uh, the base color, I'm trying to get like a almost like a natural, you know, natural lighting. So it's not exactly in light, it's not exactly in shadow. And then fill it in a little bit. Even though it's best to fill in lighting first, but because this is a concept, I'm trying to kind of convey the material. So I'm going to put it in very neutral lighting as much as I can. What was her eye color? I forget what, I, what her eye color was. Let's see if I can't find that. Hello, what do you think her eye color should be? Well, I'm personally, my personal favorite is green. But she could have, you know, light purple. <laughs> light purple? I think yeah. I gave her... She's got the Targaryen hair. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, that's another reason not to do purple. Thanks. Thanks for reminding yeah, me. Of I... <laughs> of course, of course. You're welcome. Uh, definitely not going to do that. Uh, I imagine that you're going with natural eye colors also. Uh, right? For some of them. For some of them. Okay. Let me see. I'm trying to so find that document. I'm light green. trying to find that document. Like, uh, what's her name? Amelia Clark? I'm sorry, what about her? Her natural color is like light green, almost gray, right? Or hate, I don't is know. it? I don't remember. I all remember that it's not mm. purple, and I was pissed about it. I think it's blue, but to be honest, I might be very wrong. Let's see. And she could have metrochromia too. Color, this character. I color. Let's see what she has. What is? What is Amelia Clark? Man, it's like a lot of websites that like give me like measurements and like if she has a boyfriend. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, she has yeah, but you can just look at Google Images. It's a weird she color had... to define. Yeah, because the innards is a bit green, and the outer looks a bit blue. She has really beautiful eyes. Yeah, her eyes are considered green, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but she has like she has hazel in the middle and like more colder, almost bluish green in the outside. So overall, it's green. Yeah, she does have very beautiful eyes. She's amazing eyes. Well, I didn't really. But I think her much. I think her most most prominent feature is definitely her eyebrows. 100%. Sorry. Her most prominent feature is definitely her eyebrows. Yep. No, she's, to be honest, I find her gorgeous. I mean, I really, truly find her beauty, I mean, uh, ex like, special. Unique. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people, you know, don't. So, <laughs> that's just me. Though, I will admit that I find her way more unique with uh, uh, blonde hair than with uh, dark hair. Yeah. I don't what, know. what do you think about the, the combination wig... of uh, blonde hair and dark eyebrows? To be honest, no, wait, I have to be more specific here for a second, because she did dye her hair blonde recently, and it looks atrocious, because just bleaching your hair destroys it, and her hair doesn't look good. The wig looks amazing. Right, the, 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 the <laughs> wig that I'm they spent say. millions and millions of dollars of designing and shit. No, 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 I mean, um, hmm. 
you know, it's a wig. It's not uh, real bleached hair. It's just, uh, it has way better texture as if it's natural hair. Bleaching your own hair to be white, you can do it, but uh, it's going to destroy it in the process. Uh, but uh, to be honest, I think uh, Le Lena Haiti, I hope I'm saying her uh, last name. Lena right? uh, Haiti, I think. Haiti. Oh, Haiti. Cersei, I think her. I think uh, without the wig, she looks way fucking better. So, you know. Uh, she looks she looks great in, in every way, but she does she look looks... cool with the wig, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I like her she as a blonde. I like her as a black hair. I don't know. Actually, yeah. a little bit of, uh, I gotta say, a little bit of this character's face reminds me of her, and I was inspired by her a little bit after the fact. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit, like, in terms of, like, that kind of she has that really epic resting bitch face, you know? You mean the personality-wise, or...? Not personality-wise, because this is a good character that likes to help people, so nothing like Cersei at all. Because look-wise, I would give her Ygritte with blonde hair, you know? She's the Targaryen Ygritte. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not in the face, she doesn't look anything like Ygritte. No, not in the face, in the style, you know, the hair, the clothing. The, sure, you know, yeah, she's yeah, a very yeah. Well, yeah, like that, in that sense, very much so, very much so. Although she's not an archer, yeah. she's more of a, she's more of a melee fighter, she's more of like... Yeah, I wasn't her. talking about personality at all, Ygritte is a very tough character. Yeah, but, um, and also personality, not so much, because her personality is, um, she's very serious, um, she's very, like, get the job done kind of deal. She's very task oriented, if you would. Like she, she doesn't crack jokes and shit. You know, she's a very serious. Like uh, you know, there's a there's a backstory where she has um, she has a twin brother. I think you have you seen him, the guy with the guitar and the abs. Yeah. Yeah, and he this guy is a complete like you know he's a he's a womanizer. He's a drunk and he's really, but it's like. You know, he's, he's generally the substance abuser, but he's also very smart, and he's, uh, um, he is kind, down, like, he, he's kind, so it's not like him being a woman, it's not like that he, he, like, lies or anything, but he's just, he's all about, like, he doesn't try to hurt people, but he doesn't really get attached also, generally speaking, so he's all about having fun all the time, so it's very much... Uh, he has an addictive personality when it comes to just pers the pursuit of fun. So, you know, he's always laughing, he's always drunk, he's always high, he's always whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see. What the fuck was I looking for? I was looking for something. <laughs> oh, I was looking for her eye color. So ADD. I'm just diagnosed now, ADHD. So, there you go. <laughs> Um, uh, I can't. Well, just name her eye color Amelia Clark and that's it. No, because I don't know if that's what I that's what I plan. Because I usually what happens with me and how my creative process works is this is why I have to write everything down. Because when I plan something originally, like I would put a lot of thought into it and like give reasons and then think out the story and have good reasons, and then I would forget my own reasons. And then I would forget the thing. And that's why I have to write everything down. You can find yourself in uh, 15 years, like uh, George R. R. Martin had to. Oh like, uh, so did Jane uh, Westerling had narrow thighs or wide thighs? Right. Oh my God, it's a conspiracy. Oh my God, it's not her. Right, exactly. No, no, it is her. I just fucked up. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, so I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to, any details that actually, well, so here's the thing. So those details, I'm not super, uh, the visual stuff, I'm not actually, I don't care about it as much because that's easy to both concept, like see here, like once I have the co this concept done, there's your guide, right? So I don't need to worry about it. I can just refer to the visual thing. So it's not about that so much, but there's a lot of other stuff that's like that I had I had reasons for and secret reasons that eventually become relevant and foreshadowing and shit like that, and um, you know that I don't always keep track of it uh, for all my characters. So I mean, I try to I, I I should be making notes to myself on all that stuff, 
Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of it is like, like I have a lot of Easter eggs and shit that I like. I forget that I put them in there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kevin, do you ever put Makes Easter sense. eggs in your stuff? All right, cool. Hello? I don't know what happened to Kevin. Oh, he's, oh, he said BRB. I didn't see that. He, he wrote BRB. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Ella, did you go see any movies lately? Sorry? Did you go see any interesting movies? No, man. I have been completely off movies uh, uh, recently because, to be perfectly honest, I couldn't find the patience for it. And uh, not to mention, I can't go to yeah, yeah. But movies are designed I... for people who don't have patience. Yes or no, because I, recently I didn't really have any movies that I felt like watching. And uh, uh, do you know what it's like when you have too, too much on your mind and you can't really find the relief in a movie and it just gets you more agitated? Mm. That's kind of where I've been. And... Uh, um, I'll make up on my, uh, I'll catch up on my movies soon. Word. Yeah, it's uh, it's only uh, temporary. Um, okay, so I actually, her eye color that I have written down here is gold. Gold? Cool. Yeah. Maybe green with gold? Like, cause uh, green with gold would be more logical. Some uh, green eye color has like golden stripes within them. Like hazel, let me see that. Uh, no, but you can. You gold. said you don't have to be perfectly realistic, so you can. You know, the innards can be a bit brighter, the outer a bit darker, like it is in most eyes. Yeah, I mean uh, that are light. People, people can have eyes that look gold. Um, it, it's it's a very issue. You know, it's just like. Uh, I'll put it like that. I had a friend when I was in uh, in school. I had a very good friend whose eye color was very light green, and the innards, like when she just woke up in the first few hours, yeah. the part that's around uh, the pupil was very much golden, like yellow. She had like cat eyes, so you know, happens. She had okay. gorgeous eyes. So, so you're saying, so the inside will be gold, or the outside will be gold? I think, think the inside is the more logical. Thing. You know, it's like... Uh, and then make it like more gray on the outside kind of deal. Yeah, it's like a small halo that goes in, like, uh, that sends arms, you know, yeah, to the I outer. Know. I think I know what you're saying. Let me try to do this real quick. Not arms, really. More tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, for example, this would be... We'll make it like a little... Uh, like so... Damn it. Let me pull out the yeah. Something like this. And then this one. Alright, let's do the pupil box on. We want an image, hue saturation is fine, just darkness, make it all pure black. All fine. And bring it into like here. It's probably just not. Yeah. Do this. All right. So now here. What we gonna do? Let's see here. I'm gonna do like little creepy shapes here. Tentacles. Yeah, I don't usually pay this much, this close attention to what they usually just draw them in, but whatever. This is fun. That's right. So, like show, and then we'll go a little lighter. 
saturated. You see this? Hmm? You see this? Yes. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I would, it seems it's still a bit even dark to me. It seems dark? Realize they have a sort of glow to them. It has layers like that. That's uh don't worry about that. That's I'm I'm the part of the process is building it. Painting stuff without the lighting, you know. Mm -hmm. And then later you come back and you do the back. New artwork on your demon art, Leo. What? DeviantArt? Oh, no, they did that shit for a while. Hi, uh, then I haven't been here in a while. I know what you mean. I had the same experience after I haven't visited. Like, holy crap. You've been busy. <laughs> yeah? That's cool. Thanks. Hey, so which one are you looking at? I don't remember what I had. Uh, Prowler Gun. Oh, yeah, that's relatively new. That's from the last several months. Ooh. Man, this is all for Medicus. That's cool. This universe is really getting fleshed out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff up there for Medicus. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of work for that for that thing. And Ella's been helping me out, you know, every now and then we do a stream and that's like a guarantee that I'll have progress on it. For you. What is the uh I'm just curious, what what is the uh what is the what? M196A3. Is that just like a random? Or like, where, 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 is, where are you looking? What is this? Your Prowler gun. Yeah. It's an MPWI M196A3. Uh -huh. Let me remind myself. That's another one of those things that I probably had a good reason for and then I totally forgot. Uh, so I need to look at it again and see if I can refresh my memory. My memory is generally shit. Just overall. My memory is like, so, wait, the Prowler? <laughs> you don't remember? I mean, it sounds legit. Oh, M the shotgun. I'm looking at the newer gun. Okay, the Prowler, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was it? Um, oh, it's uh, it's N NPWI is uh, New Pittsburgh Weapon Industries. You there, Kevin? Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. It's New Pittsburgh Weapon Industries. Tight. Yeah, that's what that was. Like you know how in uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know like Smith or Weston or whatever like gun manufacturers like you you drop mm -hmm. the manufacturer in front of the name before the name of the gun. So that's what that was. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm glad you like it. So what like uh, what's one nine six eight three? Is this like random? Uh, yeah, just a couple of numbers that I like. And A three is uh, it's uh. A, so in a, a lot of uh, certain certain weapon manufacturers do this, and uh, the the American military does this as well. Um, and in guns, where you have uh, it's like almost like a mark, like it's a version, it's a third version. So for example, you have <coughs> M16 A, A1, M16 A2, and it's just like iterations. And because I went through several designs on this, and this was the third design that I stuck with. You know, I was like almost, I treated it as if it would be like a manufacturer's history to kind of weave that into the narrative. So that that would be like the third version of even the more advanced. Because generally what they do is they come up with a version and then they make improvements on that. And then, you know, 
their customers and their users, give them more feedback, and they make improvements on that. You know, that's usually what happens with a lot of guns, especially when they're um, made for military usage. I really like the grip on it. Uh, the the front grip looks like it's really comfortable to hold. Uh, mm -hmm. I would hope so. Yeah. Like really minor question, but what is the twenty two? What does that mean? Um, that would just be a like a squad number. So it's like a like a this is a, it would be like a serial number for uh for 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 the unit. So <clears throat> it would be like say you're say you're like a say you're like a part of a guard group, you know. Uh, you there? Hello? I am. I can hear you, Ella, but I lost Kevin again. Uh, I hope you he can hear us. So, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, you can hear you? You can hear us? Here you go. So the 22 would just be like, say they have maybe 30 guns, right? So they paint serial numbers on them so that whenever they distribute them, they say, hey, okay, you take number one, you take number two, and then it's like, it makes it more personal so that the same person is responsible for that gun. And it's their gun. They maintain it. They know who it belongs to. So they know gun number 22 is assigned to that person. Does that, oh. does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So that means like it's not exactly post-apocalyptic, right? So there's still a company manufacturing? Uh, it's not. Uh, there, there, there's pockets. It, it is post-apocalyptic. And then there's, but it's not, it's, it's, very much disorganized, so it's everything broke down into like, like <coughs> most of humanity is gone, like eighty percent of humanity is gone, and there are pockets of like functioning city states that that kind of could hold their own, but it's not like it's a government. It's like it's a city state kind of deal, or it's like they built walls around the, the ruins and they they built a defensible position, and and in those small pockets. Industry did start to come back, yes. So it'd be like so all those, uh, like literally New Pittsburgh is one of those places where uh, I see them as, uh, you know, okay, they, they 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 were able to fortify themselves, build walls and stuff, and name that city that, and <coughs> excuse me, and um, and they probably like have a lot of. Uh, like metal working and steel working and all that stuff and they restarted the factories but um and they give a certain semblance of organization to it right i mean but that said like it's really not that hard to make guns like i know places in uh in asia i've seen a video of it that they like they make a handgun in like two weeks and they just make it in a garage right like it's very it's very easy things. to produce guns I guess that's kind of what makes them so effective and widespread because, you know, they're really not, in a post-apocalyptic setting, like, it wouldn't be very hard to, um, to kind of arm the populace, as it were. Hmm, Merlin's eyes a little bit yellow. Ish. Really invisible, but it's not that bad. I see you now, man. Stop moving down.
terrifying looking. All right, cool. That does not look very good to me. Okay. And then like a freaking demon. Uh, yeah, I Sorry? can see evil now. Tum -tum. Yellow on yellow is very demonish. Yeah, that's fine. Um, because I have, uh, you know, other characters in it. I'll just bring it down to the lens separation then. So, image, hold on, it's not what I wanted. Image, lens separation. So, we'll just bring this down a little bit, like so. Lens separation is going to be above right there. Fine. The hue will be like usual. And now what I'll have to do is kind of do a little bit of painting out here. Uh, the fun one for that. It's quite funny to watch it happen. What do you mean? Suddenly she has one eye. <laughs> what was wrong with it before? I mean, besides the fact she looked like a demon? Oh, you're changing the color now. Okay, no, I meant like with the replacement of like uh, the eyeballs and shit. Shading into it. Oh, now you, she you, looks you, like you'll she's on Ellen. We'll see what she looks like as well. We'll see what I'm doing in here. Here. Those are some serious eyebrows. I like it. Yes and no, because their shape is weird. Like, the upper side of them is not natural. Oh, no, you really can't. Yeah. Thank you. 
Hello? Hello? So, are we? What's up, you okay? Oh, yeah, my back, uh, uh, hopefully, totally. Don't you love being old? Yeah, I love it every day. Yeah, it's a dream come true. <coughs> you really understand. At least you're not using your hair, so I got that going. Yeah, done. Don't be so quick to say that. No, uh, you got you're getting treatment for that. Yeah, but it's fucking expensive. Yeah, no kidding. I'll look at treatment for it for myself. Like uh a lot. Well, it's also a lot about uh, how you maintain your hair. I mean, uh, how often do you wash it and what do you wash it with? I wash it with the blood of my enemies, of course. What do you wash it with? Mm -hmm. You know, pixie tears. Right. So what's the problem? That's the trick. Yeah. What I do... She looks way less demon-like now. Success. Yay. Great success. Looks like you're giving her a brush of makeup. <laughs> yeah, I push it a little bit too far. It's going to get worse before it gets better. You see. Well, I'm all for the Targaryen uh, brightness. Make her as pale as 13 year old Daenerys before she started writing. I mean, she's supposed to be. She's, uh, this character is pretty pale. I mean, that's, uh, we're, we're much easier. Hey, Kevin. Kevin? Do you uh, follow the Marvel movies? All that stuff? Yeah. You excited for Infinity War? Yes. Yeah, boy. When are you going to see it? Whenever we find time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I watched was Spider Man Homecoming. When did you see it? Wait. Nice. But I, like that's not uh, Marvel Pictures. Uh, Spider Man Homecoming is uh yeah it's a Marvel Cinematic Universe. Don't it? Yeah, absolutely. Dude. They got Spider Man back, dude. They did it. <laughs> So they co-own it. Uh, I guess so. It was funny and enjoyable. It was fun. Yeah, it's not a bad movie. Yeah. That's not really so weird. I can't wait for that book too, but I have to admit that that's about it. After Other what? Other than Game of Thrones, that book too. Yeah. That's the only movie you're looking forward to? Yeah, yeah, I have to admit that. After it is. that, you're done with movies forever? No, it's just the only one I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
I don't know. I also studied theater and uh, I've looked at acting along the, uh, as homework for three years because of that. And uh, it kind of changes forever the way you see movies. No, um, very, very doesn't mean that I've stopped enjoying them since then, mm -hmm. but the older I get, the more chewed up I feel most movies are, and it does and become harder true. and harder to entertain me in right. the form of movies. I really enjoy podcasts and uh, stand ups of certain people, though. to look like a person in that face. I'm just playing with something else right now. I think I'll do something with that hair though. I'll probably do something with that star. Maybe make the lips a little bit more full. The forehead might be getting a little Large, so maybe bring the whole line back on. Oh, yeah, and save warning, gotta save. Before everything crashes, just go to hell. Go to hell. I like her face. I'm looking at it. Just, uh, I think it's more. I think I think her face is like a face for now. Yeah. The gold doesn't provide a lot of contrast because everything's in dark tones. But generally speaking, everything about her is dark tones. Um, it's probably fine. Because our energy color is going to be blue, and that would have been the one thing that maybe the. Maybe I would have made her eyes blue instead. Mm, yeah, it would have uh, stood out more. Yeah, I have a lot of other characters. What is those combinations? I don't know. But her powers are related to like winter and stuff. Maybe I should do blue. Hmm. Let it go. Go. Well, make it blue. Mm, you think I should make it blue? Mm-hmm. Why did I make it gold to begin with? I'm trying to remember. Because it's easier to think it would, you know, imagine it one way, but then, you know. And her brother, different. her twin brother has uh, also blue eyes. Yeah, what about him? I don't know, nothing. The, you're, you're I imagine they have similar features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, but I don't really, like. I don't think uh, you went into details such as uh, eye color. And if you did, I didn't. Yeah, I don't remember. Let me bring them up. Uh, there he is. No, I didn't put his. I didn't put his eyes in it. I think he was. I can't see him yet. Yeah, I think I was talking to somebody and it's like, well, you know, like they, they were like, well, it's, it's silly if their eyes are the same color as their gems and their power, basically. Well, it doesn't, you know, there are tons of shades of blue. So many, it would be a yeah, vastly different shade Yeah, but if I'm doing blue, blue, I'm going to do the same blue. No, man, that's, yeah. I don't know, I need to think about this. I need to think. One of them could be lapis blue and their eyes could be bright blue, you know, like ice chips. It could be, you know. Right. 
or just make their eyes even lighter than that uh, stone. Because in eyes you really get all sorts of light blue to dark blue. You do. I don't. I don't hate it right now. But actually, you know what I can do. I should have fucking done from the start. Is just test So I can do another layer and sample this color right here. And that'd be like, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, we'll, we'll do the different modes, but. Yep. Let's see here. Sample that. Oh, this is going to be the strong work, so bear with me. I need to recognize that it takes a minute to update on you. Oh my god. Now she looks like a white walker, which is actually not a bad look. Pretty damn cool. Do you see it? I do now, but it's uh, in a bit of a lag. Yeah. I, I see now like him next to her. We're testing it. Green at that point. What if I do here instead? I need a blue like this. I don't know if that works better or not. Hard to say. Hmm, hard to say, hard to say. I guess I like it more. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I'll run it by some people. Let's see. Alright, what time is it? It's now 4.40 uh, for me. We've been streaming here for about... Uh, what is it say? Okay, so we've been streaming for an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a solid, uh, solid place to start. I'm happy with her face. Yeah. I'm not 100% about her eye color yet. Her face looks really good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm getting ready to call it for this one. Just go back to other work as well. But yeah, she's getting there. I'm wondering if I should have any more decorations and like pendants and shit hanging on her or just, or she's good as is. Um, what do you mean hanging from her? Like, you know, like necklaces and shit, like all sorts of tribal shenanigans. To be honest, with this kind of uh, shirt, like with the collar, I uh, wouldn't, if I were you. I don't think it will look very good. At least not as far as necklaces, but uh, other stuff are open. Oh, shit. All right, so we're probably getting ready to call it for uh, for today's stream. Uh, what do you think, Kevin? Mm. This so far, getting suggestions. Can't hear you at all. Hello. Hello. We gotta figure out what's up with your uh, microphones. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. But that's fine. Um, okay, so yeah, we're probably gonna call it uh, right now. So uh, if you guys wanna pimp yourselves out, now's the time. Uh... <laughs> well, I have nothing to pimp out yet, but I will soon. Yeah. We look forward to it. So Kevin's <laughs> gonna have some. Uh, He's gonna start working on some interesting things. 
uh, pretty soon. He's working on interesting things already, and he's already done uh, a couple of things. Um, but I would definitely recommend. Uh, hey, Kevin, can you uh, send me your uh, website? The one uh, I want to recommend that uh, uh, pen and paper tabletop thing that you uh, that you wrote the rule set for. If people wanted to try it out. Uh, if you don't mind dropping me a link real quick. Oh. Something at Carbon Made, right? Uh, KevinWay.CarbonMade.com He has a couple of things that he's been working on. And uh, he has this uh, interesting, uh, interesting pen and paper RPG system called Hack 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 in Slash. Uh, back in May 2015, he has the PDF up there. Uh, that's his website. He's working on a couple of things. He did like a battle simulator for battle, battle outcome simulator, which is a really good study. Uh, he's been around. Vintage was a cool game that I helped him out a little bit with. Um, and yeah, this hack, 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 and slash pen and paper RPG. Definitely check this one out. Uh, he's got the PDF to download for free. Anybody wants to check it out right here. And all this stuff. Very good combat system. It's pretty straightforward. Interesting approach. And, uh,. Yeah, so once again, thank you, Kevin, for hanging out with us today. And, uh, it was really fun. Yeah, and thanks, Ella, as always. Uh, pleasure. And uh, yeah, we're going to call it. So uh, say hi and bye to everybody. And uh, thank you, everybody. For bye, watching. guys. Have a glorious night. Later, GGs. <laughs>